is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Debbie Rao YouTube channel. I am your host, as always, Kevin Coleman. I am here to talk about another talented freshman. So we like to do on this channel is, you know, I think it's fun highlighting players that could be the next guys of college football. And when we're looking at the next guys of college football, I think this kid has been underrated way too long. He's someone that I've been touting since his beginning of his recruiting. Like, hey, this guy's good, man. Look at him in CTC and Debbie Leagues. Like, this kid can be very good. He's underrated. He's underrated. And he is actually showing out lately. And that's Damian Martinez from Oregon State. You know what? This kid in the last three games has really showed his talent, and I think that he's the most explosive player on this team, and that I don't think is a hot take. I think that they're finally giving him the rock, which is good to see. Uh, against Colorado, he had 22 attempts, 170 yards, and three touchdowns, and you might be saying, yeah, but Colorado had, but I don't care, man. He's producing, and he's talented. Like The kid out of Texas is very good. People don't understand that Damian Martinez um, was was legit in high school when you're talking about what he was able to do as a junior he had 31 touchdowns he had, he totaled 2,000 rushing yards he had over there he was just incredible then as a senior at two and seven times as a 1700 yards rushing and he ran for 26 touchdowns and he absolutely just crushed everything all state all district running back in texas and when you're looking at what he's been able to do here your people are going to be kicking themselves that they didn't go after this kid and oregon state head coach john smith done a great job recruiting and finding these finding these guys and they found a guy in damian martinez so let's go through what he's done this year 79 attempts 517 yards he's averaged about six and a half yards per carry five touchdowns he's got two catches receiving yards not really there so receptions wise, we're not going to see that. But from a rushing standpoint, I talked to you about his Colorado game, Washington State, 16 attempts, 111 yards. And then against Stanford, he had three attempts for 83 yards and a touchdown, all in three wins. And they were able to beat Stanford 28-27. And against Utah, he did struggle a little bit, 10 attempts, 23 yards. So he's still a freshman there. USC's not getting the carries. I was at the Fresno State game. He only had 18 yards, but he was, when he got the ball, man, he was one of the most, he was the quickest you see everything there. I think he's had to get into the offense a little bit, and the coaching staff's had to trust him. But damn it, he has really shown out in terms of what he's been able to do this season. Uh, big fan of his moving forward. Now, let's talk about some of his strengths. Now, remember, we talk about strengths and weaknesses. We're not saying that this is bad or good. We're just saying, hey, this is what we want to see, that we see that he's doing well so far and things that he probably will work on. It's not talking about, like, you know, what is – we're not just going through all the negatives, right? So first, positive. Let's talk about this. He's a north-south runner, man. One cut, he's going. And he's a load already. Six foot two, sixteen is what he listed at. And I think he's going to get a little bigger. And with that size and speed, you got to love what he's able to do. But he's a load to take down. He hits that hole quick. You're going to watch it on tape here in a second when we talk about him on his tape in his last game against Colorado. But when he gets downhill, he's a hard man to stop. He runs through holes. He sees holes pretty well. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that on his kind of things he needs to work on. Uh, but I think when he gets that hole and he gets to it, man, he, it's it's just there. He's just hard to take down. Then he had the power. Like, he's a power guy. And you watch his high school tape. I think the one thing that stood out to me when I was scouting him and going over stuff for, you know, our Debbie were out on our Patreon and everything like that. You know, when you watch his tape, a high school tape, he's just a power guy. Like, and, and then he has that speed. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a it's a long or it's a, a quick speed it's a long speed like he gets downhill he gets that weight behind him he bursts through the hole and then he just keeps going and when you're looking at it from a perspective of like as a runner in the pac 12 he can continue the success like north south guy power guy speed guy and he fits into an oregon state system that has proven that they can they can bring talented back, you know, think of Cleo Herbert. Some of these other guys have come there. Like he has been very good. They've been, that's a very successful program. And we talk about it all the time on the channel, on the show and a Patreon, on a podcast, like guys like this helmet scout, helmet scout Damien is right. And, and, and he, he's going to fit in that system even well. It seems like he's taking over that backfield. And I think that he's not going to let it go. And then that's just the reality of it based on the runner that he is. Now, some things that you'd like to see him get a little bit better at. Open field athleticism isn't perfect. Like, I think he gets to that second level, but then he looks for contact. He's going to take your take your ass out. Like, that's kind of the runner he is. Downhill guy, going to look for that tackle, look for that contact. I think that's one area that he needs to do better at. So that open field athleticism, can he make guys miss? Is he going to be able to take it to the next level? Those type of things, I think, will come with, with, with playing. But I don't know if he's ever going to have that true, true open field athleticism. I think he can. I think he can develop it. Um, but I don't know necessarily his running style fits that. Receiving, I don't think it's ever going to be there in terms of like what he's been able to do. Oregon State's not going to ask him to do that. So Oregon State's not going to have that receiving kind of area in his in their game plan. And in, in Texas, it, when just looking at the film and what he's able to do, he's a pure runner. So, again, he's not going to be out there probably in third down. Now, he does has a couple catches and stuff. So, can he develop it? Sure. I'm not going to sit here and say that he can't. Um, but I do think that that's somewhere that you want to see him, especially if you're going to play fantasy with him. Like, we're going to have NFL fantasy. We're talking about that. Can he be a PPR guy? Can he be that? Now, he might just be just a, better, a very good pure runner. 
Uh, but there's a guy to keep your name. You know, you got to understand that I kind of some limitations of him. And then you like to see production. Like you want to see consistency here. Um, I like it so far. 517 yards is nothing to sneeze at here, especially in the college football landscape. But okay, can he keep this going? So when you're thinking of Oregon State, can he keep this going? Oregon State is a good team. They're not, they're not by any means going to just mail this in. They are a bull team and they are going for it. Like they think they can beat some good opponents. And they, they only lost two big games, probably against the two best, you know, Team USC, UCLA, Oregon's in there, obviously, but they're scheduled. They got Washington, Cal, Arizona State, and a tough game against Oregon. If they can win out the next three games, they beat Washington, they beat Cal, they beat Arizona State, and Damian's a big player in that. Then we go to Oregon, and then that kind of sets, okay, can he produce there? What's he going to do against a top probably 10 opponent at that point? Oregon game is going to be bring massive for the Oregon State program. So those are just some of the things that you like to see him get a little bit better at, but let's just watch the tape from his last game. And you're going to see the kind of things I'm talking about. Downhill runner. I like that cutback right there. Gets it in there, and he gets nine yards, right? He sees the hole. He's just going to go for it. So I think the one evolution of his game, the hole, and have that agility to kind of make the guys miss. But in the red zone, this is the things you like to see. No one was taking him down right there. No Colorado defender. Colorado kind of just gave up right there. There was no way Martinez was going down. So these are the type of plays that you like from a from – a, like a film breakdown. Like he's one of my favorite people to watch film on. Like I just love watching him play, especially Pac-12 after night. Again, right here, goes down. Now, that's where you see it. Now, again, I was watching all 22. I can't show you guys all 22 on this, uh, you know, just YouTube stuff. But if you look in here, able to split the hole, he has an outside lane here. Now, I know he sees here at this hole, but he's got this outside lane. Maybe this guy doesn't have leverage, right, when we're talking about where he's at. But if he gets to the outside, that's probably a touchdown. And instead, he kind of cuts it up the field, which is fine. Gets that hit. I mean, you're that's the little nuances about his game. Like, hey, I love that he got that first down. I love he looks for contact. But maybe if he sees that vision, he can get up the field. Again, here, nice catch. Able to make the you know, That guy's not going to tackle him. Like, that's just embarrassing for that corner right there. I don't know what just happened there. But Martinez does that, right? So when we're talking about strength, this is where he's at. And in the red zone, you got to see where he loves it. He had three touchdowns against Colorado. The reason why is just because he gets downhill and going that Oregon State line has improved throughout the season, as we've seen. And I think that's a big part of his like his game plan where he's going here. Again, gets here, lowers his shoulder. He's going to get three or four yards after the hit. I mean, that's just after contact. That's that's the, his game when we're talking about what he's been able to do. Like, th those are his strengths, right, when we were looking at that. Again, here, one cut, gets up the field. Now, you like to see this. This is that area, right? Now, maybe maybe bounce it to the outside there, right? Everything he seems to go up middle. That's where we get that north-south running from, and I get it. I've been coached that way. I've talked about it before. Like, north-south, north-south kid in high school. But maybe once he trusts himself, he gets out here. He does it here to the outside, shows that burst right here, able to kind of – and when he gets there, it's going to be hard for defenders to take him down one-on-one. -on -one. Right there, he got it wrapped around, but he got an extra five or six yards. So when he can improve that, man, it's going to be special. Again, gets the outside. This is where he improves throughout the game, and that's what I love to see about him. He started noticing where those outside runs are, so that just shows kind of his mental capabilities in the game. Like, those are the things that you're like, oh, okay, this kid gets it. He's learning every day. Like, he's mature beyond his age in terms of as a runner, as a, as a rookie – of a freshman runner. Okay. I say rookie just in terms of like his first year. So those are the things that excite me about his tape. So when you watch going over, okay, where's his excitement come from? Where's that happen? And they were just running him. Okay. They were just going, I know Colorado's not good, but still, I love to see this from him. So let's talk about his outlook and where we're going at before we get out of here. You know, I think that he's, he's right there in terms of rankings, like production wise, he's one of the best freshman um, running back producers. Um, where's he going to go in terms of like, I think he's a value. I don't think he got drafted in a lot of Debbie drafts. I know in C2C drafts, he got drafted. Um, especially if I was in there just based on his ability, what he's able to do, uh, you know, based on guys ahead of him that haven't done much. I think you could argue that he's a top 12 guy right now. Damien is and just in that pedigree and that offense from a college perspective fantasy perspective too i think you have to really say hey maybe this kid can be that that bell, bell cow guy going forward in that offense to score touchdowns and he's a must start right now in c2c formats and in debbie he's a guy that maybe you go out and you target late in your drafts next year and you can maybe get a legit runner now he's going to go up on the board but maybe you can get a good, good guy so i appreciate you guys tuning into this this was the freshman focus um, as always, hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy the content. Let us know how we're doing in the in the comments. What do you think about this kid? Do you think he can be at next Oregon State running back?